Hi everyone, this is Nya and today I'm going to be painting these very simple and loose purple flowers. I'm not sure what they are called but this is a flower that I came by when I was taking one of my afternoon walks. I just thought that they were really cute and so delicate so I decided to try to paint it. Before doing that though, I went on another afternoon walk on a different side of the neighborhood and found the exact same plant but this time they had berries growing out of them and they were so cute and round and orange which makes such a nice contrast to the purple flowers so I decided to include the berries in the painting as well. Before I start to paint them, I'm just going to sketch out the shape so it's easier to understand. I'm just going to start with simple five petal flowers. The ends are a little bit frilly and to paint them later, I'm just going to paint stroke by stroke so the edges might not be as even all throughout. I know that the flower is not as chubby looking as this, but I don't know why I tend to make the shapes a bit rounder than the actual realistic thing. So if you don't like this type of look for your flowers, you can make the petals a bit more realistic and slightly more narrow. The inside is slightly darker in value, so I like to just dot in a slightly thicker consistency of the same color and then filling in the center with yellow. Now let's try to incorporate a bit of angle into this. You can see that this one is slightly tilted. That's because when I was drawing this, I had an oval in mind instead of a full circle for the silhouette of the flower when they're facing front on. And the more narrow you make the ovals, the more tilted the flowers will look like. I'm just going to draw another flower underneath these ones and this will make the clump of flowers within the stem and I'm also going to add on lots of flower buds growing out of each side of the stem. I'm going to simplify the shape of the flower buds by drawing on ovals and for each of those stems which connects the flower buds to the main stem, sometimes I like to curve them upwards or even for them to just lay horizontally and as they get towards the bottom they start to face downwards and become a bit smaller. Another feature that I like to include in this painting are the orange berries. From the tree that I saw there weren't that many round orange berries but because this is a painting and I find that the orange berries will complement the purple really well I'm going to paint a few berries per stem. As for the leaves, I'm going to keep it simple. Most of the leaves from the actual tree were actually folded, but I'm just going to flatten all of them to make it much easier to paint. For this, I like to start by drawing slightly curved stem and I'm just going to add on the leaves on either side. I like to also include some which are slightly foreshortened so it's facing towards us and the stem is a little bit shorter. Personally, I'm going to keep the size more or less the same but you can play around with the size as well to add more depth to the painting. Now I'm going to combine the leaves with the stem and the flowers. So here's just a smaller version of it so you can get an overview of everything combined. But from the leaves that I already drew out, I drew a straight vertical line so I know where to place the flowers. You can place the flowers in any height you want. You can make it closer to the leaves or closer to the bottom depending on the composition that you're going for. And after that, I'm going to finish it off with some flower buds berries and also more leaves if you would like to. When you're composing your own painting, you can play around with the different heights and you can also use different consistencies and play with layering to create more depth but for mine I'm just going to keep it fairly simple so it's much easier to follow. So you can draw as many of these, you can even draw a frame according to the size of the paper you have to help visualize the composition that you're going for because we're going to be painting this freehand later on. However, if you would like to, you can also draw a very light outline to make it much easier to paint. But since I am going to be using fairly light consistencies of paint, those pencil marks might show through unless you draw it very, very finely. Next, let's go over the colors that I'll be using. Firstly, this is Terra Verde by Holbein, New Gambush by Daniel Smith, 
Cobalt Blue Hue by Holbein Titanium Gold Ochre by Schmincke Quinn Red by Daniel Smith and Chinese White by Holbein I'm also going to be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martens Now let's start by painting the leaves I first use a mix of Cherry Verde with New Gamboge and on the side I'm also going to have a different tone of green this time from Cherry Verde and Cobalt Blue I'm going to start with the yellow-green mixture to paint the leaves I'm going to paint the stems later on so make sure you have a good amount of space in between those leaves Here I'm painting them out fairly small but if you want this to be more scale to size the leaves are actually supposed to be much larger than this in fact they're supposed to be a bit larger than the flowers however i made mine smaller because i don't want them to distract the flowers so it's not as realistic as it should be but i find that it works for this particular composition once i have a few leaves down i used a thick consistency of vermilion to paint on the stems that i connect to all of the leaves and next, I'm going to use a lighter consistency of the green mixture that's on my palette. This time it has more terra verde and a bit of cobalt blue in the ratio. And I'm going to paint on more leaves. Just like before, I left out a bit of space for the stem. But this time, as you can see, I'm painting two sets before adding on the stem. This way, the really watery paint has a bit more time to settle. And after that, I use the dark green mixture from my palette to paint on the stems using my size zero brush. So from here, I'm just going to keep on painting more leaves with the same method, using my large brush for the leaves and switching to my size zero brush as I paint the stem so it's much easier to control. As for the colors, you can tell that I like playing around with the different ratios. The yellow green is made by adding more new gamboge into the mixture. You can also use terra verde by itself, but if you want your green to be slightly darker and deeper, you can add cobalt blue into the mix. With this being said though, please pay attention to the consistency as well. A lighter consistency has more water in the ratio which means the color will be much lighter as you paint them and the thicker the consistency means you have more paint so like this leaf that I'm painting at the moment you can see that the color is very vibrant and the texture of the paint is much thicker so they travel less this would also mean that the value is much darker than the lighter consistencies After I've painted on a few leaves, I can see that it's very light in general. So to balance out the lighter consistency on the right hand side here, I decided to use a thick consistency of the dark green from Terra Verde and Cobalt Blue. I feel like I have a good amount of leaves here so I'm going to start painting on the flowers. For this I'm going to use a mix of cobalt blue with quin red and Chinese white and whenever I'm mixing paint I like to separate the two hues next to each other just so it's much more accessible to change up the ratio slightly. For the purple you can make it a bit more pinkish like this one or use a bit more blue in your mixture personally i just like to mix and match so for this one it's a little bit more pink but for this next one it has a bit more blue so the purple is deeper 
Next, I'm going to use the same mix as before. This is from Cobalt Blue and Queen Red, this time without the Chinese white for a darker value. And I'm going to place this close to the center of each petal while the base color of the petal is still a bit damp. So this darker value will slowly and naturally spread. As for the center, I used a thick consistency of titanium gold ochre. For the sepal underneath the flower on the left, I just added new gamboge into the green that I already had on my palette. Then I'm also going to use the same light green mixture to paint on the stems as well as the tinier ones which will connect to the flower buds. With the same color in a thinner consistency, I'm going to paint on the ovals for the flower buds. For some of them, I'm going to paint on top of the flowers and for the rest underneath. As I get closer to the bottom though, I want to make them a little bit thinner and smaller. For some of the flower buds which are placed close to the flowers, I'm going to add a little bit of that light purple and place it at the tip of the flower buds. This is why they're slightly larger because they're at a different growth stage. Now let's repeat this on the left side. I'm going to start by painting out the flowers. This time the color is a little bit more pink and this time I'm also using a lighter consistency for a bit of variation. Once I've painted a couple, I'm going to follow this up with a thicker consistency of a darker value purple and I'm just going to place on lines on the damp surface. After this, I'm going to follow it up with a thick consistency of titanium gold ochre. For this next flower, I'm using a thicker consistency so it stands out against the previous flowers that I just painted. To complement this color, I'm going to use a thicker consistency of a darker purple as well. This time, since the surface is more damp or wet, this time I didn't paint on lines, instead I just dot the ends of each of the center petal. And just like before, I followed this up with a thick consistency of titanium gold ochre, but because the petals were a bit too wet, the paint traveled more than usual, so I just took off the excess with a dry brush. Next, I'm going to paint the stem of these flowers and just like before, I used a mix of New Gamboge and Terra Verde. I also switched to my size 0 brush so it's much easier to paint on the thin line. But if you're still finding it difficult to control the paint with a small brush, you can try to use a lighter brush load. It might mean that you have too much paint on your brush, so dab the excess paint off with tissue before painting on the thin line. This way, the bristles doesn't hold too much water, so it travels much slower out of your bristles. Just like before, I followed this up by painting the flower buds. This time I went straight in with the ovals because I felt like it was much easier to control the placement of these flower buds if I paint the ovals first. And you can just choose whatever method you find is most comfortable for you to paint with. After I've painted on the ovals, that's when I'll connect it to the shorter stems. On top of the flowers, I want to paint larger flower buds. So I started with the purple, then connected to the sepals or the bottom of the flower buds with the green. I think you guys understand the method by now. So for this one, I won't instruct you guys. Instead, you can just paint freely for the last stem of flowers.
the moment these stems of flowers look a little bit too stiff and I think it's because the stems are not long enough so they don't look as delicate so I'm just going to extend all of the stems downwards and I'm also going to add the smaller flower buds Here I decided to go over some of the lighter flowers. I just find that this painting is generally too light so I'm just going to build on some of the vibrancy. At the moment I find that this composition looks too symmetrical so I'm going to break the symmetry by adding another stem of flowers at the back and this time I'm making it smaller so it looks like it's further back and I'm just sticking to a light to medium consistency so it doesn't take away from the foreground. Next, let's introduce a new pop of color by adding on the orange berries on the side of these stems. For the orange, I'm using a mix of titanium gold ochre with a bit of new gamboge and quin red. I'm going to add a few of these per stem and to paint it, I just basically draw out circles, leaving out a small dot for the negative space as highlight. After painting on the berries, I'm going to connect them to the main stem by using a thick consistency mix of New Gamboge and Terra Verde. Once the berries are completely dry, some of them are a little bit faded, so I'm going to go over the bottom area for a bit of shadow and a bit more form with a thicker consistency of the same color mixture. The stem in the middle looks a bit too empty so I decided to add more flowers behind the flowers that I've already painted and I'm just going to paint it loosely without any details. Then after this I'm going to increase some of the values of the flower buds by using the Terra Verde and New Gamboge mix in a thicker consistency and I just find that this addition of the darker value helped give the impression that there is a slight rotation in the placement of the flower buds as the darker flower buds look more present compared to the lighter ones. Just a few more touch-ups here and there and that's basically it for this painting. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more like this, please consider subscribing and turn on the notification so you get notified of my new videos every Friday. Like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. Thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye!